Talk, talk to me. WSRadio.com The San Diego Council on Literacy brings you Literacy for All with your host, Jose Cruz. Welcome to the show. I'm Jose Cruz. Uh, You're listening to the Literacy for All radio show brought to you by the San Diego Council on Literacy. And we're on WS Radio uh, with our special guest uh, from the Dolly Partner Foundation, uh, the Executive Director of North America Operations, Nora Briggs. Uh, Nora, welcome to the show. Hi, Jose. Thanks for having me. Oh, so glad to have you. Did I get that introduction right? You sure did. You know, I was really surprised in in, uh, in scheduling with you and being uh, in, in interacting with all of you. And I just want to tell you one thank you because uh, all of you have been so receptive and and so glad to have you on the show. Uh, y'all get back to it so quickly. But one of the things that that I I learned that there was something beyond a North America operation uh, of the Dollywood Foundation that actually for a long time I just thought it was like um, Nashville, Tennessee area, et cetera, and the foundation is everywhere. Can, can you talk to us about that? Absolutely. So the Dollywood Foundation is Dolly Parton's nonprofit organization, which she started in 1995. And, Jose, you're absolutely correct. It did start in Tennessee and her home county in Sevier. Um, But since 1995, uh, celebrating 25 years, we have spread to five countries. So not just the United States, but to Canada, Australia, um, the U.K., which is England, Scotland, Wales, and now Ireland. Wow. Well, that's big, yeah. and and it's uh, very big. and uh, and just for our listeners, um, if, uh, I'm I'm gathering there's various aspects of what the Dollywood Foundation does, and uh, I know of course about Imagination Library. Uh, what are what are the what are the functions of the foundation? Um, how are uh, domestic uh, activities different from what might be happening in I- Ireland, for example? Well. Thanks. That's a great question. But first, I just wanted to say hello and let everyone know that Dolly sends her greetings. Um, In particular, Jose, she says thank you for helping her library reach more kids because I know that um, you guys are running a program um, in your local area. Um, Uh, uh, Can I stop you right there? That means so much to us. (laughs) That really does. So. (laughs) with that. Thank you. Have to start with Dolly. That folk, I'm, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna let folks at, at home know, and, and and some of them are listening now, that we got a message <laughs> from uh, from Dolly Parton. That's outstanding. Thank you. Say hi for yeah. us. Thank you so much for starting a program in your area. Yes, yeah, you bet. Just to know those families and those children. Really, I mean, it's very special to them to get a book. It's it's quite a thing. I mean, and uh, and I'll, I'll now just say just on uh, you know where the rubber meets the road. And I know you have a lot of experience with uh, a number of programs throughout the country uh, where children uh, every month are receiving a book mailed to their home. Uh, it's such a special thing. that, And the way we look at it is, is as Dolly has given us the ability to, to infiltrate in a sense that, that, you know, a lot of homes, we don't know what's happening uh, and we don't know how to reach uh, certain families, but in this case, you know, we're a, we're able to because of of uh, uh, the Dollywood Foundation and Dolly Parton and Imagination Library uh, sign up children to receive uh, a book a month until they turn age five, and it's uh, mm-hmm. a beautiful thing. It is a special thing. So that is actually our flagship program of the Dollywood Foundation. It's a monthly book gifting program and it's for children from birth to their fifth birthday Um, and it's very simple we partner with communities so it's a grassroots community by community Mm -hmm. program Mm -hmm. and that community becomes our heroes right and those partners can be a single person a group of people Mm -hmm. an organization and they commit to bringing dolly parton's imagination library to the area partners promote the program they find children in that age they Mm -hmm. sign them up 
And next thing you know, they're getting a specially selected age appropriate book with their name on it, on the label addressed to them in their home, which is especially important right now because of the contactless nature uh-huh. of the program. Right. But you're, you're right. It's a gift, right? Mm-hmm. It's not charity. It's a special gift that comes in every month. And what a difference it can make in the home. You know, and I remember, uh, like, well, wishing that one day I would, like, receive something in the mail. <laughs> and, you know, you're whatever, four or five or even nine or ten. Mm-hmm. I don't know when that started to happen that I was getting mail. But how about that? Something mailed to me on whatever, age four, and it's a book uh, that I can read or someone can read to me. Uh, and it's. I think as children know the books are coming and they know almost exactly what time of month they come. Mm -hmm. They're dragging their parents out to the mailbox. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then when that book comes, that child's going to make that parent to do something, their caregiver, someone they love to snuggle and read that book. And over and over and over. <laughs> yep, no excuses. And I have to tell you a story <laughs> that that um, I, I was actually visiting friends. I mean, we're in Southern California. I'm in San Diego. But I was visiting friends up in um, uh, a town called Ringgold. I don't know if you're familiar with Ringgold, Georgia. But it, you cross the street yeah. and you're you're pretty much in, you're in Chattanooga. And I just okay. happened to be visiting at a time because they had a couple of, of, of the youngsters there. And I was visiting at a time when one of the books came in the mail and they were just like, you know, Jose, we want you to see this, you know. And I was like, wow, this is great that this is happening for, for the children in this region, but it's it's way beyond that. And, and the other story I want to tell that we weren't doing this, uh, the San Diego Council on Literacy wasn't doing Imagination Library, except we had a partner out in the desert it's an area called Borrego, uh, Borrego Springs. Um, the, the person there was Joanne Stang, and I'm going to mention her name. Hopefully she'll listen to the, to the show after we uh, to put the podcast together. Uh, and she said, you have to do this. And she sat down, and she bought me a cup of coffee, and she said, you have to do this. <laughs> and and uh, we had to do it, and we're doing it. And we're so grateful to um, the Dollywood Foundation and Darley for, for, uh, for doing this and for getting the books into the hands of the children. That We know that 60%. And I know a bit about Dolly's background. I mean, she's got a big heart for for the for the children, and especially for for children with uh, low low income status who might not ever have a book unless these things happen. Yeah, and you actually um, really just highlighted the mission of the foundation, and it's very simple. It really is just to inspire a love in reading, of reading and books in mm-hmm. children. Mm-hmm. Uh, feel like it's the most powerful opportunity you can give a child. And in Dolly's world, words, she mm-hmm. wants children to do more, learn mm-hmm. more, mm-hmm. hear more, and therefore be more. And so do, do you know, uh, I mean, I'm, now I'm really digging because uh, <laughs> not, not everybody decides that a book is uh, one of the best things you can do for a child. And so uh, I know that, that uh, uh, people who, who have affluence or success, they're looking for ways to, uh, to give back. Do you know the process for how Dolly uh, decided Imagination Library was it? Yeah, actually, because, well, you know, it was inspired by her father, who was illiterate. Mm-hmm. So she was looking for ways to give back. So in her community, she started thinking about what could she do to increase literacy, or it really started out by just trying to increase high school graduation um, in her county. Mm -hmm. And so she started a program called the Buddy Program, where uh, two students would pair up with each other, and if they both graduated high school, they would get money. And there was an accountability piece to that. Mm -hmm. And she shared with them how important it was. She inspired them to dream that they could finish high school. And what happened? The high school rate of graduation went up and is still very high in the area, in Mm -hmm. Sevier County. And so she started thinking, okay, well, that was a great success. And I see we can make a big impact. And in working with the schools, She heard from the educators and the teachers that children who are not doing really well at that third grade level are typically the ones that have a harder time catching up. And those are the ones that struggle through middle school and high school and actually may not graduate. So she started looking at things to help in third grade. 
So what she actually did was started supplementing with uh, teacher's assistance and trying to help to provide more resources in the classroom there to, to, in order to help bring those kids who might be falling behind. So that went on for a period of time, but then the more she dug deeper, she realized that the teachers were telling her that it really starts at kindergarten. And when children come into kindergarten, and if they haven't been exposed to reading or words or books, that they're already behind. Um, and so that's where she started framing her thought around, mm. I think we need to get to them really, really early. Um, wow. Wow. And, and and we know that brain science tells us that those brains are developing so rapidly yeah. in that zero to age four that if you wait to kindergarten, it really is too late. Yeah, no, so I'm going to yeah, I'm going to stop you right yep. there, only because we're going to go to break in in a few uh, seconds. So I I don't like that I'm stopping you right now because this is good stuff. <laughs> Dolly was learning what we've learned, right? And she got into it, and she got to to the to the heart of things and to the root of things and such. And so we're so glad that she pursued that, that she had that success uh, with the high school students, and and then looked for, hey, how is this happening? Why is this happening? And what can I do about it? So we're so glo- glad for that. So we're going to come back to to that topic. I uh, also want to learn a bit uh, our, for our listeners, learn more about how you got to be doing what you're doing, what your average day is like, and then a few things about what Dolly's doing right now because I know she's really busy. So we'll be we'll be right back. Uh, you, our listeners, we've been we've been here with Nora Briggs. She's the executive director of. Uh, North America Operations for the Dollywood Foundation. I'm Jose Cruz. I'm from the San Diego Council on Literacy. This is the Literacy for All radio show, and we're on WS Radio, the worldwide leader in Internet talk. Homeless veterans and their families are suffering and need our support, but many won't ask or don't know that help is within reach. Veterans Community Services is here to help. Amazingly, about 35% of the homeless in our neighborhoods are veterans with families. Low-income veterans or their friends are encouraged to contact Veterans Community Services and reach out for help with housing and other services. Call now, 800-974-9909. I'm Dr. Janet Woodcock, Director for the Center for Drugs at FDA. If you've recovered from COVID-19, confirmed by a positive test, you're in a special position to help us fight the virus. Your plasma has antibodies that can fight COVID. Please donate plasma now. You can help save lives. There are locations across the country that have safe ways for you to donate. Find a site to donate your plasma at coronavirus.gov. Produced by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services at taxpayer expense. This is Bill Gruber with BizVid Communications, a Southern California video production leader. We've been honored to sponsor, produce, write, and host many of the fine programs on WS Radio over the years. So we understand how important the internet and your website exposure are. As video producers, we know the tricks and secrets to incorporate video to increase your search engine optimization and business success. Visit bizvidcommunications.com to see what we can do for you. B-I-Z-V-I-D communications.com. Tired of presentations with no impact, no inspiration, and no traction? Do dull speakers have you and your team disengaged and distracted by smartphones? Christopher McAuliffe brings energy, insights, and two decades of experience delivered with punch, humor, and heart. Your team will leave energized, uplifted, and with a sense of purpose. Visit ChristopherMcAuliffe.com to bring some heat to your next speaking engagement. M-C-A-U-L-I-F-F-E. ChristopherMcAuliffe.com. Can you imagine a world without children? A world without their smiles or their laughter. A world where children don't play or sing or dream or imagine. At St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, we can't imagine a world without children. That's why we're working every day to find cures for diseases that strike down children everywhere. Diseases like cancer, pediatric AIDS, and sickle cell. And we won't stop until every child is cured and every disease is defeated. Because we can't imagine a world without children. Can you? Finding cures, saving children. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. To learn how you can help, log on to our website, 
stjude.org. Talk, talk to me. WSRadio.com. The San Diego Council on Literacy brings you Literacy for All with your host, Jose Cruz. Welcome back to the show. I'm Jose Cruz from the San Diego Council on Literacy. You're listening to the Literacy for All radio show on WS Radio. And we have as our guest, Nora Briggs. She's the executive director of the Dollywood Foundation North America Operations. And uh, when we uh, broke for, for the break, or when we stopped for the break, um, uh, Nora was giving, giving us information just about some of the research that Dolly had done that brought her to uh, putting the Imagination Library together. So, Nora, you said she started in her hometown. And then what happened? And then it spread, and um, she thought, you know, it might go over a few counties or so. But we were very blessed that the state of Tennessee saw the importance of early literacy and getting books into the home. And so they asked to partner with us to create a statewide program. So a statewide program means that every child in every zip code is eligible to register Mm -hmm. for the imagination the library program and get a free book Mm -hmm. and so that's we grew to tennessee and then north carolina (laughs) Um, and we have several state programs going and um, we're actually working on expansion in california as well okay real good so um so uh, us in san diego doing what we're doing and of course the folks in brago springs are there right now not a lot of programs in california well, actually, I, I knew you might ask me that question, so I double-checked. So we only have 35 programs hmm. across California, mm-hmm. um, and we need, you know, we, we definitely need a lot more programs. We're not reaching as many children as we could, mm-hmm. um, but we're we're working with the California First Five Commission right. Right. to see if we could encourage more community partners to want to start a program in their area and um, expand the programs that we do have. Excellent. I have to tell you another short story. We want to hear from you. But here's what happened that that, um, I was talking to a group about what we're doing with Imagination Library, and there happened to be someone in the audience from the First Five Commission here in San Diego. And uh, uh, they said, we need to talk to you. And then uh, after they heard how uh, the description of Imagination Library, they said, we, this is right down our alley. And so they gave us funding to do what we're doing because it still costs $25 per child per year, right? Uh, yeah. Correct, so, it so, does. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. I yeah. didn't know you were associated associated with California First Five. Group. Well, this, this would be the First Five Commission of San Diego, offer. right? So so you're in the right place, <laughs> right? Because what you're doing, they've already told me, you're doing the right, you're doing what, what we we <laughs> want uh, to have happen. So good for you. <laughs> now, are you actually doing this? Are you the person who goes out and does the uh, uh, expansions? Yes, myself and I have a team of folks. And I think you spoke with one of my colleagues, Pam, in setting up oh, yeah. the imagination. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, and what does she tell you when, when she talks to you? She talks about, I love, love, love this program. Oh, you bet. You bet, <laughs> so yeah. She, uh, just she's another been with the foundation for a long time, mm-hmm. almost 20 years. That's yeah, 20 and she years. really did help us get yeah. started. And again, very accessible. I mean, like I said, everybody's been like that. So, so glad for that. Uh, what do you do on your average day, Nora? Like today? So my average. Like today, uh, my average day is um, talking with local programs, such as yourselves, um, spreading the word around the program and what it could do for folks and, and, uh, and you know, communities, mm-hmm. and working with state legislators who are interested in seeing um, how they could bring Dolly Parton's Imagination Library to their state mm-hmm. and open it up for eligibility for other children. Um, working with my team, uh, we get a lot of requests as well. I handle some of the requests for, you know, for Dolly's, um, for Dolly's attention. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's a great job. In fact, it's my dream job. <laughs> it's my well, absolute dream I, job. Right, right. Well, I mean, okay, allow <laughs> us to be starstruck for, for a minute here. Um, when, how often do you see Dolly? And when you see her, because I'm assuming you do, how often do you, what do you talk about? 
we talk about expansion uh, of the program or, you know, where where places are interested or where we have a lot of ki- children that may um, that may have come on recently. Um, so I have a funny story mm-hmm. with Dolly. So mm-hmm. I've only been with the foundation. I'm coming up on to two years. Uh-huh. Um, as you know, I, I came in from the private sector. So I met her at a, a public event, or actually it was a private event. She was giving a speech in Nashville, Tennessee, uh-huh. to our state legislators around mm-hmm. Imagination Library. Wow. And it was the first time I got to meet her within uh, the first month of my employment. And um, she's like, Nora, come on over here. <laughs> and so she... She called me over, and I went to shake my, you know, put my hand out to shake her hand. And instead, she pulled me into her side, put her arm around me, around my waist. And, you know, she's quite petite. And <laughs> even at 5'6", which I don't think is very tall, I felt like a giant. And um, she just was loving and <laughs> genuine and warm. And she had her arm around my, my waist, and she was joking about, where they might find space in our small office for me to work from. And um, it was just the most incredible experience to have, to have her just, to just be talking about normal things. Like, you know, where do they find space for you in that yeah. office? And she was just giggling and laughing. And um, she's absolutely warm and genuine. And um, she's nicer than you could even imagine. And so, She's also the chairman of the board, so we have opportunities, you know, multiple times a year to talk about our strategy in Mm -hmm. terms of where we'd like to expand or where there's an interest or a need. But then there's all those other touch points where we get lots of requests for her to participate in something. We had a lot of feedback Mm -hmm. with uh, the documentary premiere, Mm -hmm. right? And that was in December. Right. Um, So I'm just super blessed to have the best boss in the world. (laughs) Well, you know, they, they say it's you know, you sound like you're having fun. She looks like she's having fun. I I believe that she is. They say it starts at the top, you know. So it's it's uh, just part of this um, this leadership and this vision and and um you know, and just you know her being being smart and generous and all and, and all the other talents that that Dolly Dolly Parton brings to the world. I'm so glad she found you, and she probably is too. So sounds like like you're like you're having a good time. We are. I'm super blessed. Um, how can you not? Yep. It's an amazing mm-hmm. program. Um, you know, she calls this her heart program. Wow. Wow. Now, can I ask you, let's see, I'm not sure how much time, we, how much time do we have? A little bit over two minutes? <laughs> okay. Let's see. Do you have a favorite uh, family story or child story? I think it really is about books and reading. Um, Just in general, I grew up in a family of readers, Mm -hmm. and there were always books. We were always reading um, very little TV, and what I remember the most is actually sitting on the lap of my grandfather Mm -hmm. and um, my parents reading, reading to me Mm -hmm. and me trying to read to them, and it didn't matter what it was. Mm -hmm. And I I think that's what created... um, my ability to be successful and whatever I've wanted to to go after is being a lifelong learner. And I love books, love books, love reading. And it just, that's why I'm super excited about the program and you can feel that my heart's oh, yeah. connected to it. Because oh, yeah. <laughs> it's very special. Well, we're we're in the right business. I mean, we're in the right business, and um, and it's it's uh, it's reading. It's the 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 magic of of books. Um, it's it's sharing um, literature and goodness gracious. I mean, who's who's doing that more than anyone else? Um, and somehow, some way, um, uh, all of you and Dolly figured out a way at a real low cost to get good books to children through the mail. And, I mean, it's like $2 a, a book a month. I mean, so books cost more than that. And and putting a book in the mail, I'm not sure how you're doing it, but you're doing it, and we're glad that you are. <laughs> so, uh, Thank you. Well, you, you know, your vision of literacy for all, right, that's really key because we agree that we think that education is the equalizer, mm-hmm. and we think everyone should have access to literacy, right, books. Yes. Yes, absolutely, absolutely, and and uh, and Do- Dolly's you know working that vision for us. So we're we're so glad we're glad to have her on on our side, and uh, and have her voice and leading by example, uh, and uh, and bringing bringing uh, 
really good people in, into the foundation to do the work that you're doing. Are there uh, maybe last few words you'd like to share with our listeners? Um, how about a quote from Dolly? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, so Dolly says, The seeds of dreams are often found in books, and the seeds you help plant in your community can grow across the world. Wow. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, we need we need more of that kind of messaging, uh, more, again, yeah. leadership books, and uh, planting seeds. Planting seeds. So very good. Nora, I want to— Well, you're uh, our partner in that now. You bet. Planting you bet. And I'm proud of that. <laughs> I'm proud of that. And, and, and again, I'm like, I'm going to go home and say, but Dolly Parton had a message for, for me and our listeners. So that's a, that's a big deal. But thank you for having me. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, we've been talking to Nora Briggs. She's the uh, executive director of the Dolly Fo- uh, Dollywood Foundation. And I have to tell you, my, my smartphone always wants to do that uh, automatic editing and wants to change Dollywood to Hollywood. I don't think so. <laughs> All right. But uh, this is the Dollywood Foundation, North America. Uh, Nora. Thank you for being on our show. We need to do this again, especially if you have something new you'd like to to chat about with our listeners. Uh, we'd we'd we'd, uh, we'd make uh, we'd make a slot for you. I promise you that. And so, well, thank you uh, so yeah, much. Yeah, and we're really enjoying uh, having a, a, pro- a program here in San Diego. I, I all of us wish you success in and what you're doing in San, uh, California. And uh, if there's any way that we can help uh, with that that outreach and that expansion, let us know because we want to uh, we want to be a part of it. So anyway, Nora Briggs, thank you again, and uh, we'll have you back, folks. Um, how about that? We had Nora Briggs and the thank Dollywood you. Foundation. <laughs> You're welcome on thank our show. You very much. You're Perfect. welcome. Thank you. And this has been a Literacy for All Radio Show on WS Radio, the worldwide leader in internet talk. Does your business do a lot of shipping and wish you could get more for less? Stamps.com is the solution. It's the ideal way to automate and simplify your e-commerce shipping needs. Easily import all your venues like eBay, Amazon, and others. Trips to the post office will soon become a memory. Stamps.com gives you postage on demand. Just click, print, and mail at discounted shipping rates. See why so many e-commerce businesses have switched. Visit Stamps.com. I raised $8,000 to build schools for South African children. After realizing how many people go hungry in San Diego, I now volunteer at a food pantry. I'm spending the next year doing volunteer projects across three countries and helping in ways they designate to be the most helpful. The WorldLink program at the Joan B. Kroc Institute for Peace and Justice recognizes the potential of youth as agents of social change. Learn how you can help youth become a generation of leaders in action at peace.sandiego.edu. Love to read but just don't have the time? With Audible.com, you can catch up on reading simply by listening. Audible has the largest collection of digital audiobooks, over 85,000 titles in every genre. Listen to a bestseller on your iPhone, BlackBerry, Android smartphone, or one of 500 other compatible devices. Visit audible.com slash WSRadio today and get a free audiobook when you try Audible free for 14 days. That's audible.com slash WSRadio. I've heard this is like one of the best pizza spots in town. Yes, it is. I'll do a slice of pepperoni, slice of vegetarian. You got it. And I will pay for all of that in three days. In three days? <laughs> What's that mean? Well, wait, you accept credit cards. That money's not going to hit your account for three days anyway. I need my money quicker. At Chase, we hear you. With Express Funding, card payments are in your Chase account the next business day. Go to chase.com slash express funding. Chase for business, so you can. Compensated participation, all businesses are subject to credit approval. Not all clients are eligible for next business day funding and additional terms, conditions, and restrictions apply. Can you imagine a world without children? A world without their smiles or their laughter. A world where children don't play or sing or dream or imagine. At St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, we can't imagine a world without children. That's why we're working every day to find cures for diseases that strike down children everywhere. Diseases like cancer, pediatric AIDS, and sickle cell. And we won't stop until every child is cured and every disease is defeated. Because we can't imagine a world without children. Can you? Finding cures, saving children. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. To learn how you can help, 
log on to our website, stjude.org.